Hello everyone, my name is Al, I'm from Cyberlab and today will be another video about TrueNAS. In this video I will show how you can install Proxy Manager for you to be able to manage all your sites using this application. In the previous video I show how you can install a Docker and Portrait in your TrueNAS. Original TrueNAS don't accept Docker installation, so in this way we install a Ubuntu server in a virtual machine and in this Ubuntu server we install Docker and Portrait. In this video I will show a little bit more how we can install, it will be first installation, first Docker container that you're going to install and in this way you can start to install some application natively from the TrueNAS. You can directly this website through the proxy manager, in this way you can manage your sites and have more than one site, not only one, and you can have more websites for that dedicate for other servers. You don't need to have only one website directly link for your TrueNAS and in this way you can have a lot of possibilities. If you want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show. But first of all, don't forget to subscribe for the channel, leave your like straight away, because if you forget, it will be better for me. But anyway, and let's do it. Before we start to do any installation, I will go for the base of my system. What we are using is a TrueNAS, in this TrueNAS it's revision 12 U4 and it's uh, named as a TrueNAS local. I don't have a big pool, only have 500 gigabytes of pool where it's only available 400 around. I have a 16 gigabyte of run and a CPU with 5 threads. The more important for this one, before we start to install the proxy manager, we need to have our virtual machine installed. This virtual machine I call as a Docker app. You can call anything and if I come here and see I have two virtual cores, I have one gigabyte of run. If I come here in VCM, I can access my virtual machine. Uh, if I come here I already make the login for this machine, the IP of this machine will be 192.168.1.214. You can always start to chew tape all your problems here directly in VCM, but I didn't figure out how you can paste information this way. And because we're gonna get a bigger doc compose and run it, I don't want to directly tape everything because the chance to make mistakes is too high. We're gonna open our put and through the put we're gonna access the SSH from this website. You can use the prompt command if you're using Windows, but in our case we're gonna use the put. I have here already the put open with my IP that's already defined. But before I start to do any installation or any configuration, I will go for the base for the proxy manager and what we're gonna do about it. If I come here, the program that we're gonna install is NGINX proxy manager. In this one, I can come here and put start. In this project, if we come here in the installation, they suggest us to use a Docker Compose installation. All the time that I go to install a new Docker Compose, I go through the portrait and open a new stock. It's because the revision that we are running is 3 and the portrait only accept up to 2.1 revision, so we need to run this Docker Compose directly to the PuTTY or the SSH, this reason that you need to have it open. But before we start to configure it and run any application, we're gonna see which image that we're gonna install. If I come here in this first image, that I have already open here, I come here and scroll down, they suggest us to do exactly the same installation, port 81, port 8, no problem at all, they say that we need to run as a docker compose up slash t, we're gonna show it. The port that we're gonna access is 81 and here is default users. Now we're gonna see this second database, if I come here in Marian database and I look at this one, they say about this image that we can access. If we open this image, they come here and say that it's extension of Yoba system Alpine Marian database. Why I'm looking for it? Initially I tried to run and uh, install from the standard uh, database, but they didn't work so well. So I really suggest you to come here in Yoba system and install this database from Yoba system. This database has not been received an update so short time, but it's still really good and it's working quite well. So let's change this one for this image. Have this one in mind, we can start to configure our Docker Compose. To do it, we come here in our Proxy Manager website and I copy all this information. 
I come and open a Notepad++ and the Notepad++ I save this information. When that it's paste, I can start to modify some information. Here the image I will leave exactly the same because it's not a problem at all. The ports that I'm gonna use, uh, I can use exactly the same because I'm using Ubuntu server and this Ubuntu server don't use any port already defined that's necessary to use. So I can use as port 8, 81 and 443. Now other thing that we can modify is the database host. You can see that this database host DB is exactly the same. If you want to modify the name and put test or can put any name, you need to modify here the database and here the database, otherwise you will not make the correct link between them. The port that they are using is 3306, the standard port for the any database. So we can leave exactly the same. If you don't want, you can change, but it's better to leave exactly the same for avoid any problem. Other thing, it's the user, password and username. I suggest you to change it for security reason. But in my case, because only install for the video, it's not necessary to change in my case, but I really strongly suggest you to change. Other thing that we need to consider is this data slash data slash that let's encrypt because we're gonna create our folder in our linux server and inside this linux server we're gonna have everything located in the same position so it's fine for leave the same information and it's exactly the same for the mysql if you modify here the user you need to modify the user in the bottom because we didn't modify anything we can leave exactly the same information only thing that I told that we're gonna change it's the name of the image that you're gonna use. So we come back here, we cite this image that we're gonna use, and we come here and paste this image. Only to avoid any mistake. Have this one, we're gonna choose to select the last image. So we're gonna define as last. And now we have configured our doc compose. It's quite easy, so we can come here and copy this information. Have this one in mind, we open our put and we are gonna start to create our folder. To do it, we need to do mkdir and ginx and we create this folder. Now we need to enter in this folder. We go upon, we're gonna put cd ngix ngix and now we are inside this folder. Now we can create our docompose.iml. Now we're gonna run nano docker compose dot IML. Once that is created, this one we can paste information for our Docker Compose that we modify. We copy here and paste. And now we press Ctrl X and yes, I want to modify it and enter. Okay, we create our Docker Compose, but we didn't run it. To run it, it's easy. We come here and put sudo docker compose up slash D. We need to put sudo because we are not running as admin. So if you don't put uh, sudo, they will not work well. And we're gonna run this command. They ask, please put the, your password. So we're gonna run with our password. Now they will create the app and the database. In my case, they didn't download the image because I had already installed this program before. If in your case, you didn't install it before, they will download the both image and that is done. But because I had this one done, it's easy for me. One thing that I want to remember and show you guys again, if I go, if I put ls.a, they already created these two folders that I told before, uh, data and let's encrypt. If I come here and enter inside this folder called data, if I open this folder, I have all my data here that is recorded. If you want to backup it, you can always copy all this folder that it's uh, in GINX, and with this folder, you can backup it. Other option, you can make a snapshot for all your image or all your virtual machine. In this way, you can have all the snapshots for virtual machines and you are protect. But this one is not at the top for this video. So we're gonna return here and we're gonna minimize this page. What we need to do now, we need to access our proxy manager website. As I told, we're gonna use port 81, so we're gonna tape the same IP address plus port 81 for our website. The first time that open will appear this login option and now we need to use the user and the password that has been defined. To discover it, we're gonna be passing our proxy manager page and here it will be your email and your password. So we're gonna copy it 
and paste. The same thing, we're gonna copy the password and paste here. Only to avoid any mistake, it's easy only to copy and paste. Now we can come here and put sing in. First time that you're gonna try to sing in, they will ask you to change the password, change the user and do everything. So we're gonna define our full name as a Sauberlab, my nickname as a Sauberlab and my user as a Sauberlab at Sauberlab.com. Now we can put save and they ask change your password. We're gonna use exactly the same password that has been defined before and we're gonna take test123, test123. I, I strongly suggest you to put a strong password. Otherwise, everyone that have access for your network or for this specific website, they will be able to discover your password. So don't let it to be easy for anyone. Now we can come here and put save. If you define everything correctly, they already appear this one. If I come here in dashboard and a proxy host, now we can start to add our proxy host. But before we add any proxy host, we need to configure our port forwarding. Our port forwarding, we need to go in our router and define that the port 443 for internal will be the 443 external, the same thing with the port 80, that will be 8 internal, 8 external. If your router don't allow you to configure this port forwarding, you need to use a different option. This different option that we're talking, it's a telescale that you can use or zero tier. So you don't need to install this proxy manager, you only install all their application for VPN and through the VPN you access your network. But in this video I will tell that it's working our proxy manager. Have this one, we can start to create our site, but we're gonna start to do it in the next video. To do it, it's easy, only come here, proxy host, add your domain, the IP that you're using, the port that you're using, come here in certification, request new certification, force and accept it. But until that time we don't have any website create and anything defined. What we can use? You can use a pay option, you can have a website. What I suggest you to use the Cloudflare to manage this DNS and through the Cloudflare you have your site. But uh, in this video we're gonna show how to do it using the DocDNS. To do the DocDNS, first thing we need to have an account for the DocDNS. To have the account of DocDNS, I already have here and I already create some users. In my case I create a user 1, Sauberlab, 2, 3, 4 and 5. I have all of those and here will be my token and here will be my users. But before we do the link between our site and our DocDNS, we need to manage this DocDNS. To manage it, we're gonna use the follow image, Linux server, DocDNS. Why I need to do it? It's really basic. Our ISP offer for us a dynamic DNS. What it means, each time by time, they will change your IP. And once that they change your IP, basically, if you didn't do a program that will track this modification of IP, you're gonna lose all the connection for your sites or connection for all your application. So the DocDNS application will be doing the follow activity. They will look at your IP for your network and say for the website DocDNS. The IP that have its X is exactly the same that you have in your register. And they say, yes, I have the exactly the same. So you don't need to update. But sometimes they will say, ah, the IP that I have my server, it's X. What IP that you have in your system? And then the DocDNS will say, yes, I have IP Y. So wait, something's wrong. Let's update for your X so we can match it. This program will be responsible for it. And this program is quite basic. If you come here and go to install, they offer all the architecture that you want. But the TrueNAS will work with architecture 8664, so it will be not an issue for you. And here it's the Docker Compose that we're gonna install. In this case, this revision that we are going to install is revision 2.1. So it's easy to install directly in the portrait. To do it, we're going to copy this information and come here in our portrait. So we click here in stock and here in stock, we can click and add a stock. Remember, the last application that we install, it's already here as a Docker Compose, so it's fine. And we come here and put add a stock. We paste this information, copy the name for DocDNS and paste exactly the same only to avoid any mistake. You can define any name that you want, but for me it's fine. And now we started to modify some information. Our PUID PJD, first thing that we need to decide. So we come here in our configuration and we put ID and the user that you create, Sauber Lab. Now you can see my UID is a thousand and my JD it's a thousand as well. 
So we can minimize it and leave as a thousand and a thousand. Time zone will be my time zone, Europe, London, because I'm in UK, so London it's fine. My subdomains. As I told, I already created some subdomains so I can copy my first one and add all my subdomains to be updated. I come here back from my portrait and I change all my subdomains. If I have more than one, I will put a comma and put my second subdomain, comma again, my third subdomain, comma again, my fourth subdomain, comma again, my fifth, and you understand. If you have more, you need to put as much as you want. Uh, in the case of TokyDNS, normally offer only five subdomains, so I'm using all my five subdomains. Now, other thing that we need to do is remove this part of volumes because they will not affect it. It's pointless to create a volume that will not save any log. If you want to put as a log file true, then you need to define the volume, but we're not gonna do it in this stage. Have this one, now we need to change our token. That's the same one that you can find in your DocDNS. And we come here and put deploy this time. Once that the container has been deployed, we can come here in container. We click in DocDNS and it put as a log. Here in the log, if everything is work well, it will appear done. So if, if everything is done, if you open back the DocDNS, in your current IP will be updated for your current IP. You can double check, look in some websites, say what's my IP and check if it's exactly the same. But uh, if they has changed a short time ago, it means that everything worked well, so you don't need to stress about it. Now, if you want, you can start to use these domains to configure your proxy manager. In the next videos, we're gonna show how you can do it. In this video, show how you can install, in this video, show how you can install the proxy manager in your TrueNAS. It's important to do it because in the next videos we're gonna start to install some extra applications and this extra application will be required that you have external access. And in order for you to have external access, you need to have a uh, system that will manage it. Also, if you have more than one server and you want to get uh, different websites related from different servers, in this way, you can use the proxy manager to manage all these websites. Different that if you only configure directly the SSH in your TrueNAS, because then you are restricted only in the TrueNAS and only specific in that server. So, if you like this video and you think that was useful for you, don't forget to leave your like. If you don't like and think that was pointless, leave your dislike. Subscribe for the channel and see you next time. Bye.